Good morning. I want to welcome everyone this morning, and I want to welcome those who are at home watching us. Um, today we're going to give some announcements and do a call to worship, and we thank the Lord that we all are free and able to worship, correct? Okay. So our announcements this week are, of course, if you look at the back of your bulletin, you know that Tuesday mornings, 10 to 12, is our home league, which Miss Lisa heads up and everybody enjoys, and a meal. Um, Salvation is always eat a meal. Um, Thursday, of course, is community lunch, 1130 to 1 p.m. Sunday, worship service at 11, but I want to remind you all 
to start practicing getting up earlier because in September we're going to go back to Sunday school, okay? So Ms. Mavis is going to be collecting our Sunday school pennies, I hope, when we go back in September. We'll see. She, she already collected our offering in the morning. Um, okay, I want to talk to you on four cadets and teens Saturday, August 14th to 22nd. Outing and lessons, uh, six, sixth graders and up may join four cadets. So please start teaching your children, showing them the way and get them in here so we can teach them about God. Um, youth Tuesday night, let's talk about Youth Tuesday night. Probably the most important job we have is raising our children. We want them to get good grades in school. It'll last them, you know, till they're 70, 80, 90 maybe. But Jesus is eternal. So for their eternal life, we want to teach them about him. So Youth Tuesday nights, we're looking for volunteers to help with our program. We have lessons and some things like that, but we also are teaching music as well. Um, so on August 16th, we're going to have a training on how to, how to be a mentor or how to be you know, a leader on youth night for these students. Um, we will resume on August 23rd with an outing. They're going to Sunsplash, and if anybody wants to help volunteer, get your bathing suits and go to Sunsplash with us, okay? You can contact Mr. Sidney. He leads our, our young adults and our youth, or you can contact Captain Claudia. They're in cahoots on helping our children and, and helping our children be in touch with Jesus, okay? Um, core Family Camp at Keystone, Camp Keystone in Stark, Florida, August 26th through the 28th. You and your family are welcome to join us. Please fill out an application. I think it's $35 to go. If you can't afford that, please talk to us, okay? It's just like a big, beautiful resort. You're not going to be camping in tents where there's mosquitoes and that kind of thing. I won't I can't say anything about mosquitoes walking from one building to another, but our rooms are very, very nice, okay? Um, please call the office to RSVP for transportation. We are going to take a bus, a chartered bus that's really, really nice. Our number to the office, 941-629-3170. Uh, one thing that I want to also tell you, we are going to be starting Sunday school again, and we need Sunday school teachers. And I think we're going to have some probably training for that as well. Um, if it's in your heart to teach these young people, please let us know. We'll have material that you'll be able to use to teach with. Uh, we do need good leaders and good Sunday school teachers so our children, you know, the way to the Lord. Um, if you have any questions please call the office and let us know, okay? We are going to try to do it on a rotation, um, rotation, right, Sydney? Um, so that maybe you teach once a month and then you're off and then, or maybe we go to different classes, but we are going to have it so we have different teachers if we can so somebody isn't stuck all year long not getting to go to their Sunday school class, okay? All right. All right. Let's have our call to worship. It is in your bulletin. I'll be the leader, you can be the congregation. How's that, okay? All right. Come all who need help. Our help comes from God, the one who made heaven and earth. Come all who desire blessings. Our blessings come from God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. Come all who long for salvation. All our salvation comes from Jesus. The one sent by God saved the world. Okay. We're going to listen to our praise team. Sing along with them, please. Go ahead. Good morning. You guys ready to worship? Uh, please stand if you're able. We're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high.
next song we're going to sing is Nobody Loves Me Like You. The end of the chorus says, God, you are faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you. If you believe that this morning, please sing with us.
worship you as long as I of the Lord. You know, as we come to do this uh, altar of prayer, I was sitting there thinking about uh, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that the Lord commanded the prophet. He said, he told the prophet, if my people show humble, if my people show humble, they cry unto me, I will pardon the sin and heal the land. It's a promise, but sometimes we have to, sometimes we don't know the, the meaning of, of being humble. We think that being humble is somebody dressing, you know, with black clothes and walking around with the head down. But sometimes doing that, there's a lot of pride in the heart. Humbleness comes from the heart when you cry unto the Lord. That you come with a with a hunger heart and you say, God, forgive me because I know that I need you in my life. God, I'm humble because you have given me a new day. A day that when there's so many people out there suffering, there's so many people that are in places that they can't even get up from bed. We were blessed to have another day. We are blessed to be in the house of the Lord. We are blessed to be here. Forget about the little pain that sometimes we find, you know, like when I get up in the morning, sometimes I think I'm a young guy, you know, I'm, I have this energy in my mind, I'm not going to be doing this. But when I get up in the morning, I say, oh, Lord, help me, you know, I got that pain in my back and everything. And I, we all, but when I come to the house of the Lord, I come with a joyful heart. Because I, like David said, it's better one day in the house of the Lord that that's what days out there. It's good to be in the house of the Lord that we I could praise him and worship his name. So we're going to be praying this morning for the Proceno family. I know that many of you are aware that uh, uh, Captain Claudia, the mo uh, grandmother, she, is, she was promoted to glory. And, uh, you were, we were praying here all the time and we're keeping the family in prayer. So our sister is with the Lord. She was promoted to glory. So, but we had to keep the family in our prayers. And now also there's a list, long list over here, uh, praying for Ukrainians, Russia, the Malta Jews, uh, the list of people that we always pray we, day in, day out. So let's pray together, and especially for Captain Claudia. They are, I believe they're in Texas, in Dallas, Texas, right? They're not I'm mistaken. They're, that's where they are. And uh, I believe they're coming today. So we uh, keep them in our prayer, of the whole family. Father God, we love you this morning. We come to thee with a humble heart. First, we love you. We want to say thank you, God, because you have given us another day. We believe that this is a day of victory because we are in the house of the Lord. We are here. Praising your name, serving you with a heart full of joy and happiness. We rejoice, as the Paul said, the Paul, Apostle Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. I said again, rejoice. Rejoice is more than being happy. Happiness could go here today and happiness will be gone tomorrow according to the situation we are living. 
But the joy stay within us, no matter what of the situation. We could be sick and I have joy. I could be poor and I have joy. I could be going to a trial and I have the joy because the joy of the Lord is in my heart. And that's why we praise you. Father, we ask for this uh, list of people that we pray in day now. Especially we don't pray not only for Ukraine and Russia, but oh, we need to pray for America. America needs our prayers. This nation needs our prayers. The way things are going this day, the, all this cheering, all the, everything seems to be upside down. But we believe God that you are able. You are able, more than able, to accomplish all those things that we can understand. Thank you, Father God, for the blessing as we united together in this prayer. For Captain Claudia and the family, we prayed, giving the strength and uh, Father God that we united together. They giving traveling mercy as they come back to Florida today. All the family. Thank you for our salvation family and the people that we pray in every day. We give you all the honor and the glory because we ask all these things in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, beautiful church. It's, ha it's beautiful to be back for me, to be here in the house of the Lord as last Sunday I was away. And I'm just very, very thankful uh, that I have the opportunity to be with you beautiful people in this congregation and to be able to come up here and to just say thank you so much to what the Lord has done for each and every one of us. Some of us may feel like we're rich and we only have a penny. Some of us may feel like we're rich and we have thousands of dollars. But the reason we're rich is because we are blessed by an infamous God who just gives us everything that we need. And in that, he asks that we give back to him whatever he puts on our heart so that we may be able to humble, be humble, as Carlos said, be humble in ourselves that we may bless him back in not even in many ways that he blesses us. We will never be able to reach the blessings that he's blessed us as hard as we try because it's not about our works. It's about our heart. And so what I ask today is that we don't really have any young children here, young people here, other than those sitting in the very back. Oh, I guess Roger's going to take up the offering today. I was just going to say, come on up as you feel to put your um, offerings in, or, t or your tithes and offerings in the plate today. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you bless us. We thank you that you provide for us, whether that's monetary, whether that's emotionally, whether that's physically. And we just thank you, Father God, that all we need to do is lay it before you, and you will answer our prayers, Father God. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for everything that you provide. And as we do, as you lay on our heart and give back to you, may you triplicate, quadruple, whatever it is, whatever is put in this plate, that you know how to make it much larger than what we can give. And we just thank you for that in your precious heavenly name. Amen. Okay, there you go. Amen. <laughs> That's true. As we do it in peace and quiet today. Yes. Oh. 
All right, thank you. It's just been brought to my attention um, that Cheeky is in need of prayer. Her husband is, it's been a really tough week. So if we can just um, lift Cheeky up, or Cheeky up, excuse me, um, and just help her family to know that we are here. We just say, Father God, we lift T Cheeky, we lift her husband, Lord Jesus. You know their needs. You know what they need for strength. You know what they need for healing, Father God. And we just ask that as you are in our presence, that you help Cheeky to feel, Lord, that you are answering her prayers, Father Jesus, that you are taking care of whatever those needs are and that you are just providing peace, you're providing comfort. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus, in your precious heavenly name, amen. All right, the doxology. Are you going to lead us? <laughs> Please stand as we do the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. Thank you, Carlos, and thank you, Roger. Good morning. Um, for today's scripture reading, we're going to be reading from Psalm 121, 1 through 8. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May God bless the reading of his word. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're ready for 30 minutes of me speaking here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not uh, going to speak that long. Uh, yeah, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen. And thank you, Carlos. I discovered a new, a new skill of you. Like You can be a maestro now. You can be a maestro now, right? <laughs> and you were leading. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. But God is good, right? Amen. And all the time? Amen. Amen. So this morning, we read a really interesting passage, and this is one of my favorite ones, Psalm 121, verses 1 through 8. And we're going to be talking about God's protection this morning. God's care for each one of us and how he takes care of each one of us. But before we begin, let's pray. Dear Lord, I come into your presence this morning asking for you to use me as an instrument this morning. Uh, may you speak through me this morning, Father God. Use me as your will. In your name that I pray. Amen. So we're continuing and if you see our, our bulletin, you will see that the theme of our series is called Self. And then you see a little tape there that says insufficient instead of sufficient, right? And last week, we talked about God's provision. We focused on Exodus. And we were talking about 
uh, God's provision, provision for the people of Israel. And the passage that we read was like uh, a worship to God for everything that he did to uh, redeem the people of Israel throughout the, the whole thing that they were going through. And this week, uh, we're going to focus more on God's protection. And this psalm, specifically, that we read this morning, is a great reminder of God's care for us. And it's one of, our, like I said, one of our, our favorites of all times. And I, I, I can't help but remember, back in Brazil, there were like those stickers that we would put in your car. And that would be one of the favorite ones, like, Psalm 121, verse 1. Uh, and that was one of the favorite ones that you would see in every car. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? Right? It's an interesting question that we see right here. But as I was preparing my notes for this morning, uh, one thing that I was looking for were like different translations of the Bible. And I noticed like a few differences from one another. Uh, this psalm is known in some versions as the soldier's psalm, the soldier's psalm. And another one that I saw here, it mentions uh, as the traveler's psalm. Uh, and finally, the, w the one of the last ones, and looking at some Bible commentaries as well, um, and one specific translation, it, it is the New Living Translation. The title says, it's a song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. But thinking about all those different scenarios, right? The soldier's psalm, the traveler's psalm, or the pilgrim's, pilgrim's psalm. In all those, those uh, scenarios, we will see one thing in common. A person going on a journey. It's either to war or it's either to get to another place, but it's a person starting on a journey. And no matter what motivated the writer of the psalm to write this psalm for us, uh, it's a reminder today that in many moments of our lives, we'll be exposed to some sort of dangers, some sort of dangers like different kind of dangers, we're going to be exposed to them. And sometimes we may not even be aware. And that, that's uh, another interesting thing that I'm always wondering, like, when I get in my car in the morning, how many dangers is God keeping me away from, right? Like so many things, especially here in Florida, right? They don't use the blinkers <laughs> sometimes. So you go right there. And sometimes you don't even see, and a car runs in front of you, and right? And like so many dangers, so many things that happen. Last week on Saturday, we were out with the, the kids. We went to Fort Myers. The trip was supposed to take 30 minutes. We spent an hour and 20 minutes to get there because something happened on I-75. I don't know what happened. I just saw the other day I was passing by, and I saw like a lot of uh, things on the side of the road. Something burned there. I don't know what happened. But I see that God is somehow protecting us, right? Sometimes I even think like, hey, I, I, I got this thing and this thing happened like last minute and I was delayed to leave. God may be like finding his way to protect us somehow in those situations. And this is really interesting that God protects us no matter what. So we're going to read uh, each one of those verses, although I thank you, Roger, for reading all of them already for us. And we get to verse 1, and we start with a question. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. This is the question that we get here on verse 1. And I don't know about you guys. But I, uh, both my wife and I, we, we really like, like, not really like dangerous adventure trips, but we do like, uh, like trips, not dangerous, but adventure, huh? Huh? Excitement, yeah. 
I, I like to experience something, the unknown, you know, like to get to that place and what am I going to find in front of me, right? And we, we had our g a good share of uh, different trips, uh, not in the past uh, years, but we did have like a good, a good amount of like experiences. But the, the feeling of being outdoors is just amazing to me. And I still want to explore so many different places, if God wills. Uh, is to is for me to do so well what comes to mind when i imagine this is i pr pro you probably saw some of those videos or people being outdoors in a hiking trail or something and then they are filming an animal chasing them right and the the last one that i saw i don't know it, what kind of animal was it looked like a mountain lion and that mountain lion was following that person and he was still filming and he was like walking backwards and the mountain lion kept coming at him, you know, and he was still like filming. <laughs> I, I couldn't be, <laughs> that wasn't me at all. You know, I would try to run <laughs> like my wife yesterday, like we, we were on the road uh, and we were just thinking about like, what if you were inside? We were passing by the Everglades and, and we were just wondering what, what if we were inside there, like in the middle of the night? What was the first thing uh, I would do? Like she said, I would climb a tree. <laughs> I would climb a tree and I would stay there until the morning, right? Uh, and I was being like bold and I said, I was, was going to try and build a fire. And she just came back to me. Do you even know how to <laughs> start a fire, right? <laughs> so that, that was the thing. But you imagine those things, right? Like, what am I going to do? What, like in a, if I am in a dangerous situation, I will try to find help. And the psalmist here, he's looking up the hills. Does my help come from there? Not really, right? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I wouldn't imagine like that rock rolling <laughs> and blocking the way. So our help does not come from the hills. Uh, it comes from uh, some other places. And as Christians, we believe that our help come from the Lord. He is the one that is, that is always looking uh, at us, and he's always caring for us. And another experience that I had, uh, that was back in 2020. And I guess my wife and I, we were more like into adventurous things. Maybe I'll, I'll after watching those videos, I'm not that bold anymore. Uh, we went to, forgive if, if I'm not saying it right, Mayaka River State Park. And, and we were there, like we saw online that they had those trails and we went there, okay, let's try to find one. But on our way going in, like she, she's scared of little lizards. What can you say about like alligators <laughs> that are everywhere there, right? So we went and we find like, that, those, that, that trail that said, Oh, it, it might take like an hour for you to get to the end and, and then an hour to come back. Oh, let's try and do this one. So here we go. We stop our car and we go in. And we're going in and going in and just seeing people coming back, coming back, and nobody like with us going in. And we kept going and kept going. And like, where are, where are we right now? <laughs> just woods everywhere. Like, where are we going? Right? And, and I don't know what happens, but we are humans. Like, we start hearing noises everywhere. Everybody's like, <laughs> we were looking everywhere because, again, we look for danger. Like we're we're, we're aware all the time. Like where is where is the danger? Where is it coming from? You know. And that time, I confess, I wasn't really remembering Psalm 121. Where does my help come from? <laughs> it comes from the Lord, right? Like He's gonna deliver us from anything that happens here. But this is just to illustrate. Uh, sometimes, like, we get scared, and we just need to remember, God is the one that protects us. God is the one that will be leading us, and he cares about us, and, and he will always uh, be uh, protecting us, no matter what happens. Uh, on verse 2, we have the answer to that uh, question we just read. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. 
And again, going back to all those different perspectives that I mentioned that could explain why this psalm was written, one thing is for sure, there is a journey and we will we'll have different people going on a journey and they are, they are not aware of the dangers they are uh, in front that are in front of them, uh, but they are just like getting confidence to go along in and go on that journey. Whether is thinking about like a geographic journey, okay, I'm going from point A to point B uh, through a dangerous territory or a lifelong journey, our life, right? Like since the very beginning until the end of our life and it's ups and downs and ups and downs or just a spiritual discovery journey, seeking a homecoming God. So in all those different scenarios, we will, we will face dangers. We're, that's one thing for sure. We're going to face dangers. Sometimes we may, we may, like I mentioned, we may not even see them, but they will be there. Uh, and again, it reminds me of one thing, preparation for a trip, right? So when, it, when we, we go on a trip, and that was one thing that we always did, like uh, back in Brazil especially, uh, we would start considering all those things. What are we going to need? And I would always leave her like with the details because she's more into details than I am. I will always forget everything. But my mission would be the tech, tech stuff, right? I, I, I was supposed to, pa to pack like chargers <laughs> for cell phones and other things like that we, we would need like tech-wise. Uh, and I was supposed to take care of the car and make sure everything was okay to go on a trip. But again, going back to t 2020, I think we were more like into adventure back then. And our plan was to go to Louisiana. Back in 2020, we, we got a few days of vacation. Okay, let's go on that trip. We always wanted to go to Louisiana. Let's go. And... Uh, my initial plan was like, oh, like, oh, let's rent a car because it would be safer that way. I'm going to get a car that's more reliable, you know, and everything. But for those of you that know, I got here 2020 and I just got here and everything's about credit, right? Am I right? Yeah, everything's about credit. So when I got here, I didn't really have a credit card and I was there like hoping to get a car. No way. So I couldn't get like approved for, to get a car and we, we got out of there like, okay, so I guess we're not going anymore. But we had our car. It was uh, an old one for those of you that knew, like we had a white car, a 2013 Ford Focus, which we got in May, 2020. And our trip was, I, I wrote it down somewhere just to remember, it was around uh, September, I guess. November, sorry, yeah, was in November. So we got the car like in May and that trip what happened in November. So we got out of the, the rental place and okay, I guess we're not going anymore. And she was all upset and I, w I was trying to be the good husband. Right? Oh, I, I guess we're, we're still able to go. We can go with our car. Imagine that, the only thing that I did, I changed the oil. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> no brakes checked, nothing else checked, battery had no idea how it was, so we just went. Uh, we got on that car and we just went. <laughs> and I just pray, God, <laughs> please <laughs> help us on that trip to make it safe there and come back. And so we did, and God protect us. And even when, like, through the entire trip, nothing happened, and we got there safely. We stayed in a Salvation Army place there. The only thing that happened, and then, like, again, like, the dangers happen and we, you get scared. We were driving in Louisiana already in New Orleans and this huge piece of metal was in, in one of the roads there and I just ran through it. And like at that moment it felt like, okay, my car is ripped underneath. Like there is nothing else. Like, so I'm gonna see gas leaking, oil leaking and everything. So we're done. <laughs> we're not coming back. I'm gonna call captain. <laughs> hey captain, <laughs> I'm not coming back. I just pulled over nothing happened 
not even a scratch underneath, you know, like, and it was like, it's, it seemed like a muffler that I ran through, you know, like with our car. But God protect us, you know, that, that's the thing that we can say. God protect us, you know, even though like sometimes we, we are like going and being bold, you know, like, like we did with that car, you know, like I would advise you, <laughs> get AAA, check your car before going on a trip to make sure everything is okay to go, you know, so you're not, you're not going to be stranded on the side of the highway. Uh, but again, God was there with us and he was protecting us and we made, made it the eight, almost like 800 miles to get there and the 800 miles to come back to Port Charlotte. Uh, God was guarding us and protecting us throughout the way. On verse 3 of that Psalm 121, we read, we, uh, He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. And not knowing a lot of English, I had to go to the dictionary to see what slumber means. And it's somebody that is falling asleep. Right, like, oh, I'm about to sleep, right? As I, were re I, was, as I was reading this verse, one thing that uh, amazed me is to think God takes such a protection over us. He cares so much for us. He will not, he will not let you stumble. The verse could say, you will not fall, right? No, God will not, will not let you s even stumble. That's how God protects us. Right, that's how he cares for us. He, he will not let you fall. You may stumble, but you're not going to fall. No, God says you're not even going to stumble. You're going to keep going. Um, and the other, the second part of that verse talks about like God will not fall asleep. And again, I like illustrations and I'm using myself. I'm not going to use anybody else. I could use my wife, but I'm not going to use, I'm going to use myself. She knows better. <laughs> it's a struggle whenever we try to watch a movie at home. Uh, and, and the last one, we were trying to watch that movie. And like after 45 minutes of that movie, I was and, she, and she would be at me, are you sleeping? No, I'm not. <laughs> and I was there, okay. Until that point that uh, she, f she, she had like suspicious that, okay, I think he's sleeping, but, but she wasn't able to see, okay. Until that point that I was, <laughs> and she paused the movie. <laughs> You're sleeping, I see it now, <laughs> okay, I am. And I had to admit, okay, I'm sleeping. And then I, uh, uh, next day we, th we went back to try and watch the movie again. And she was going back, going back. Were you sleeping here? I don't remember that. Okay, I guess I was. <laughs> and we kept good rolling and the rolling back, rolling back. Bottom line, I was sleeping like for 20 minutes, right? 30. Okay, so I was <laughs> sleeping for 30 minutes on that movie. I was like completely asleep. But again, what a great reminder. God is not like that, right? He's not going to fall asleep. He's not like us, you know? You may call me uh, late at night. Uh, I, I don't know. I may fall asleep in the phone. On the phone. That happened with me, you know? I'm not that old, but that <laughs> happened with me. I, fall, I fell asleep on the phone, and I had, oh, what am I talking to, you know? That's not how God does, right? And that's so amazing to know, like, that we can go to him at any time. He's not going to be like, hey, come back later, <laughs> right? Come back later. I'm, I'm taking my nap now. Come back later, right? In the middle of the danger. No, he's right there. He's going to be all the time protecting us. And, again, this is what happened with us. Like, we may fall asleep and we, we will have, like, uh, different situations in our life, but God will never fall asleep. And again, we see verse 4 of Psalm 121. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. So there is a reinforcement on that message. God will never be asleep whenever you need him. He will never be asleep. 
And continuing on, on verse 5, uh, the Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. How great is that, right? The Lord himself, he's not going to send another one, another person to take care of you. No, himself, he will be protecting you. He will be watching over you. God looks over us and he will never forsake us. We have a God that cares about every single one and each one of us. And as we keep reading here, the remainder verses that we have, verses 6, 7, and 8, we, we read, The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. And in different versions of the Bible, uh, we will read over and over this word specifically, uh, the word keep and keeper, instead of the word watch. And that brings us a question, like, who is God for us? God, he is the keeper. He's the one that watches over us. God's identity is to protect us, to shield us, to watch over us, to guard us, and to keep us. God does like a watchman keeping guard over a city when you see those towers and those guards are like looking all over to see if there is any danger coming. That's how God acts with us. He is like a protector, always watching over. And on verse, si verse 5, the Lord is your shade. like So he is like a, a protective cover around us to make sure that we will be uh, safe in any situation. And the other example would be like a, as a bird shielding its young in the shelter of his wings. That's how God uh, protects us. And what are the promises that God gives us? He gives us this promise to keep us, to protect us of any harm and any dangers that may be out there. And that's what he's going to do. He promised to be all throughout the journey of our life and as we return home. He will always be with us. He will always be protecting us as we face dangers day and night, as we read on the last verse uh, of, of Psalm 121 this morning. But the list of promises that we have here is not meant uh, to be like and suggest that we're going to walk and we're going to be invincible, right? No, that's not God. That's not what God meant to be, you know, like, okay, so we're going to face dangers. Sometimes those dangers are going to affect us. But for most of them, God will be protecting us throughout our journey. And why is that? There is a bio, uh, one last verse that I would like to share with you this morning. And that comes from Jesus himself when he was talking to his disciples. The verse is in John uh, chapter 17, verses 15 through 19. And on that situation, Jesus was praying for all his followers, specifically to his disciples on that time. And Jesus says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not from this world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. And we see right here, Jesus is making sure we are not from this world, right? We don't belong here. And Jesus is asking the Father, I'm not asking to remove them from this world because we're going to face dangers. 
God will protect us. He will watch over us. But that doesn't mean that dangers from times to times, they will come to us. But we need to have this reminder in our lives. God will always be on our side. And if he is allowing something to happen, be sure he has a bigger plan in mind. Like I, ever, I, I always say, uh, we are limited. Right now, the only thing I can see is all of your faces right here. I cannot even see what is happening outside, but God sees. God sees everything, what is happening at, at our house right now with our, with our relatives, with my mom and dad in Brazil, with my wife's parents in Brazil. He's watching over everybody. He sees the bigger picture. We are limited. We can't see anything. If something happens, don't be mad at God, like thinking, why did God allow that to, to happen to me? He has a bigger plan. We need to understand that and have that in mind. God will always protect us. He is always watching over us, and that's part of his identity. He will always be caring for every and each one of us. And I want you to go uh, with this in mind this morning, that it doesn't matter the challenges the world has for us. We can always count on God to help us out. No matter the situation, he will always be there for us. He will not fall asleep. He will not slumber. He will not let us even stumble. He will always be with us. Amen? Let's, let's close this morning in prayer. Father, you're always taking care and watching over us every single time of our lives. And we are truly thankful to you, not only this morning, but we have so many blessings that sometimes we forget. This, this week, I was talking uh, to Miss Lisa and Miss Vivian, and I was just sharing with them. Uh, we were thinking about our own hands, and we were thinking about like each finger that we have in our hands. We can thank for things that God uh, did for us, things that God uh, kept away from us. But then we were thinking about the many blessings that you give us, and we're not even able to count them. Help us to, to really remind of all the blessings, all the things that you you have been giving us throughout our lives. And let us be thankful for every single thing that you have been doing in our lives. Let us be aware that you, you are here to protect us. You are here to take care of us. And you, are, you, and you care for every, and single, every single one of us this morning here. Father, I ask that you protect us on our way back home throughout the next week. And may we always be reminded that you are always by our side. We can reach out to you at any time if we are in need, but let us not reach out to you when we need something. Let us really reach out to you every, every single time that we have, that we are living in our lives. Let us have a connection with you, a relationship, a deep relationship with you every single time, Father. Help us out. We need you. And we praise you this morning in your name that we pray. Amen. And to close this morning, uh, we're going to sing together a song that I think it's perfect for this time. And it's on our songbook. I think it's 26. I, 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 uh, I close my, my songbook here. Great is thy faithfulness, and it's really grateful, uh, the faithfulness that, that our God has for us. And we can be sure of that, not only this morning, but every single time of our lives. We're going to sing together. I'm going to try and sing verses 1, 2. Let's sing all of them, right, because they are so uh, reassuring for us this morning. Uh, we don't have our piano player this morning. 
I, I, I forgot about Roger and I talked to him this morning. No, I'm not going to put you in that situation to let you <laughs> ask you to play this song this morning. Uh, they can be very tricky. We're going to try with our piano track. Uh, it might be a little bit higher, the pitch, the, the, the key. It might be a little bit higher, but I hope we're able to sing together this morning. If you want to stand up to sing with me. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Though changeth not thy compassions, they fail not. As though as be no hope forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. May we go in peace this morning, and Erica is going to bring us the benediction. Good morning, everyone. Um, for today's benediction, um, you'll be reading from the program. It's up there on the screen. Lord, be with us now to strengthen us, about us to keep us, above us to protect us, beneath us to uphold us, before us to direct us, behind us to keep us from straying, and around about us to defend us. Blessed are you, O Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.